I think there's a lot of, of situations um, that play into it. But I think, you know, we do have a lot of black women on this team. Um, we do have a, a lot of people that are from different areas. And unfortunately, you know, that, that bias does exist still today. And a lot of the people that are making those comments are being racist um, towards my teammates. And, um, you know, I'm in a unique situation where um, I see with myself, you know, I'll talk trash and I'll get a different reaction than if Angel talks trash. LSU star Haley Van Lith has had enough. And so it, it's really up to me to, you know, uh, it's not up to me, but I have a duty to my teammates um, to have their back. Um, and obviously, you know, some of the words that were used in that article were very sad and upsetting. And, you know, I didn't really, I actually didn't want us to, to read that article before the game because hearing stuff like that, it's, it's not right. And it's not that type of description of us isn't always motivating. I think, you know, um, calling us basically the dirty debutantes, like that's, that's, that has nothing to do with sports and that is not, that's not motivating. And so I think, uh, I wish we hadn't have uh, read that because I think that that can crush your soul a little bit that someone would ever say that about us that doesn't know us. But again, you know, obviously in my opinion, I know for a fact that people see us differently because we do have a lot of black women on our team who have an attitude and, and like to talk trash and, you know, people feel a way about it. But at the end of the day, I'm rocking with them because they don't let that change who they are and um, they stay true to themselves. And so I'll have their back. This is the energy we need, quite honestly, for more Caucasian folks in this country on the topic of racism. So what is Van Lith ripping to shreds? Well, that's Ben Bolch a writer with the Los Angeles Times, who opened his article like this. This isn't just a basketball game, it's a reckoning. Picking sides goes well beyond school allegiance. Do you prefer America's sweethearts or its dirty debutantes, milk and cookies or Louisiana hot sauce? This was gross, uncalled for, and immediately rebuked by many of Bolch's colleagues in the media. The updated version would read, this isn't just a basketball game. It's a reckoning. Picking sides goes well beyond school allegiance. Do you prefer, do you, excuse me, do you prefer the team that wants to grow women's basketball or the one seemingly hell-bent on dividing it, which still really sucks, by the way. Greatly sucks. I saw an article. I didn't see it. Someone sent it to me. It was a commentary from the LA Times. I'm not sure if that young man is in here. You can criticize coaches all you want. That's our business. You can come at us and say you're the worst coach in America. I hate you. I hate everything about you. We expect that. It comes with the territory. But the one thing I'm not going to let you do, I'm not going to let you attack young people. And there were some things in this commentary, guys, that you should be offended by as women. It was so sexist and they don't even know it. It was good versus evil in that game today. Evil? As much criticism as she justifiably receives, Mulkey has a point here. Called us dirty debutantes? Take your phone out right now and Google dirty debutantes and tell me what it says. Dirty debutantes? Are you kidding me? I'm not going to let you talk about 18 to 21 year old kids in that tone. It was even sexist for this reporter to say UCLA was milk and cookies. Now you women sit there and you keep your mouth shut if you want. I'm in the last third of my career, but I'm not going to let sexism continue. And if you don't think that's sexism, then you're in, in denial. How dare people attack kids like that? You don't have to like the way we play. You don't have to like the way we trash talk. You don't have to like any of that. We're good with that. But I can't sit up here as a mother and a grandmother and a leader of young people and allow somebody to say that. I come from a different generation. I get it. But I know sexism when I see it and I read it. That was awful. 
So I hope I've answered your question. Um, we just play hard. We play competitive. It doesn't matter if it's my son out there. It doesn't matter if, if it was anybody's brothers out there. We're out there to kick your rear end, and that's how they play. It's how I was taught by the greatest in this business. What's that meme? The there you have it. Worst person in the world makes the best point. That That's exactly how many of us feel right here. Van Lith would go on to say, I've experienced it at Louisville. I've experienced it my whole life. A lot of the times I'm one of the only white people on the team. And so I do see things from a different perspective. I think a lot of people who live in communities that everyone is like them, that's when they tend to think, oh, racism doesn't exist today. But I have seen it and I experienced it. And I watch it happen to my teammates. I watch it happen to my friends. So when I go back home, which is a mostly white community, I do share those experiences. When I was in high school, they tried to cancel the Martin Luther King Jr. Assembly because we didn't have enough time for it. But every other holiday we had enough time for. We were a majority white school. So no one had a problem with it. It's my responsibility to say things when that happens because I'm in a unique position. There is so much to react to here, but first, if you could please become a channel member to support us and support what we're doing. In addition, go to tyt.com slash join. And if you want, you can check out my socials and support me there on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. There's a few points. The first is, I have seen what Ben Bolch tried to do here when I would pick up a hard copy of the newspaper and see different columnists try their best to poke the bear, throw out a tinge of racism in order for the audience to react. And when the internet wasn't really a thing, for sports radio and even outside of news radio, national radio, to talk about it. That happened a lot. What Bolch did was wrong. He tried being creative with his words and creative with his phrasing and be edgy, but it fell flat on its face. We are also in a time where we don't accept this anymore. And Bolch thinking that he could just go for it without being reprimanded in any way, shape, or form was a gross misunderstatement. And he missed the target. You could have fun with your columns. But saying the things that he said about the LSU women's basketball team is atrocious. I don't know if I saw an apology, but what I did see was a rewrite that I still thought Kind of sucked. I didn't think it was good enough. I also don't think the LSU women's basketball team is ruining basketball. What game are you watching? I'll also say this. I think it is good for sports to have so-called villains or unlikable figures. Last year in the NBA playoffs, who were we talking about the most? Dylan Brooks. And you know what? He's owned it. Doing this routine where he stares down his opponent's pregame. He's leaning into it. And if he was on a better team than the Houston Rockets, we'd be talking about him more. I think having rivalries is healthy. I think having the protagonist and antagonist, mainly the antagonist, is good for sports. Very good. If y'all watch my TikTok live on Saturday, you saw me talking about the Tim Zhu, Sebastian Fundura fight. I'll relate it to this. People watched uh, Floyd Mayweather because they hated him. And I'm talking about pure boxing. Outside of the ring, he's awful. In the ring, they watched him because they wanted to see him lose. And the ratings were huge. As LSU is set to take on Iowa, I don't see people going after Caitlin Clark 
I don't see people going after Iowa. I mainly see the hate being perpetrated by tons of folks and throwing it in LSU's direction. Their head coach, as I said, is not warrantless from criticism. I have criticized her plenty, and I still will, but she's right here. There are ways to go about, excuse me, going after a team. But saying that they're ruining basketball, leading to the demise of basketball, atrocious framing and awful. Ending on a positive note, we need more Haley Van Liths. I'll say it, I'll double down on it, I will triple down on it. From people who look like me in our community, we need more Haley Van Liths. I don't see it enough. I don't. And if it were to just be, just follow me here, Kim Mulkey, Flage Johnson, and Angel Reese, y'all would be saying that they are crybabies. You would. But once Haley says it, starts to carry a little bit more water. Why is that? Think about it.